Welcome to Career Journeys, a series of videos by the Consortium for Public Education. Here we explore the career experiences and pathways of professionals from a wide variety of careers to help you think about the skills you'll need and the paths you might take after high school. Hi, I'm Debbie Pixton with the Consortium for Public Education. Today I'm interviewing Lisa, a project engineer at Mascara Construction. We're talking as part of our Career Journeys video series to share insights into a professional's pivotal experiences and career pathways. Thank you for joining us, Lisa. Glad to be here. Lisa, tell me about your company and your role there. What do you do as a project engineer for Mascaro Construction? As a project engineer, I uh, have the pleasure, actually, of being able to coordinate and to manage all the documentation uh, through a construction process between the owner, architect, and the site workers and superintendents. Um, that generally entails not just documentation, but visiting the site, taking some photos. It involves um, reviewing and understanding all of the drawings from the architect. Um, we also look into the specifications for the project. It's kind of like your cookbook. Um, I have to make sure that all of that gets coordinated and completed on, on site. How did you end up as a project engineer? What was your path? I actually never originally thought I was going to be a project engineer. Um, I, I was actually raised by my parents in a, um, I would say, less than desirable scenario, but they never went to college. They never um, completed a degree. And um, I thought that when I was younger, I was always going to at least go to college and do that. Um, I was very fortunate. One of my uncles was able to take me on a lot of college visits. During those college visits, I was able to talk to several different departments. Um, I had a lot of questions, so they just pointed me directly to those departments. Um, I talked to a business department. I also talked to an engineering department. I talked to several different ones. And um, at first, when I talked to a business department, I thought that might be the path that I wanted to go on. Um, but I explained to them a specific, I guess, event in my life and a specific class I took, which is woodshop. And my role during that woodshop class was president. I got to basically coordinate uh, the entire class with one of my other, um, with one of my other, I guess, fellow students. And we had to develop a particular tool, device, toy, something that would be $5 or less that we could sell to the whole school. We had to go through the whole process. We had to do marketing, we had to do the design, we had to do the construction, we had to do everything. And uh, when we first were introduced to this task, uh, the entire class voted me and one other, again, my classmate, uh, as president. So we got to oversee everything. I loved my role in that. I liked being able to build something during Woodshop. I liked every aspect of it and to see all those pieces. So when I described this to a business management um, department head, he goes, that sounds great, but you might want to talk to our engineering department. They have something called industrial engineering. That might fit better. So I went and talked to... Um, Dr. Bird, actually, he's still at WVU, and he's fantastic, um, but he pointed me in the direction of industrial engineering. So I looked at that as my new, I guess, interest. Um, I dug into that. I visited and was able to actually sit on a course in a class, and that's how I decided to do industrial engineering. From there, of course, I had other life experiences, uh, exposure in my first job, as an AutoCAD drafter for WVU um, in their design and construction group. Uh, I got to work for a project engineer and project manager there and see everything that they did. And I thought it was fantastic. I got to see these big buildings going up. I got to go into renovated sites. I got to um, do all these things because they needed a student to do all the AutoCAD for them. And the AutoCAD, I learned in the woodshop class. So that worked out well. Um, 
And during that, I got to do, you know, unofficial interviews with them. I talked to them about what they did and other parts and pieces of their profession. And I became more and more interested. So once I finally graduated, I decided I wanted to go and become a project engineer. Um, what do you love about your current position? The thing I love the most about being a project engineer is being able to see something on paper that is drawn up from the architect and then to see it actually being put together piece by piece and at the end of the day see a full-fledged building. We walk around cities all the time and we walk around all these different buildings but you don't get to see all the little nitty gritty details that go into building a building, let alone something so large as commercial construction. So I love being able to see that full process. And on top of that, being able to obviously be involved with all those different people and all those different trades. Um, you know, I never grew up with my dad teaching me how to do carpentry work or something like that. But um, going through and being a project engineer in construction, now I get to watch Masons installing, you know, the exterior of a building and I get to see all the studs going up and all the drywall going up with the carpenters. I get to see all these different steps that I've never been exposed to. And I get to appreciate the skill that all of these people have step by step, every brick by brick. <laughs> What kinds of things would you say a high school student should do either in their coursework, academically at school, or in their extracurriculars to prepare for a career in engineering? So as an engineer, uh, again, we're a little more mathematically and um, mathematically inclined. So I would say pursue your, your maths and sciences as much as you can. Um, but I would also caution and suggest that you also look toward those soft skills. So if you have the opportunity to take um, a speech course or a present presentation course, um, whatever it might be, to develop those soft skills, that can be key, um, especially in a managerial role. What question should students ask themselves if they're considering pursuing a career in engineering? So I would say the number one thing to ask yourself is do I like to know how things work? Do I like to know the nuts and bolts of things? Do I like to look into all the nitty gritty details? Um, as an engineer in general, that's, that's usually the question you're asking yourself all the time. Um, as a mechanical engineer, you know, you want to know how a car runs. You want to know how a specific piece of machinery works. You want to know how that thing functions. As an engineer of any kind, you should know that you're interested in digging into all the nitty gritty details of how things work. So that would be number one. Do you like to know how things work? And then another thing I would ask is what specific or what part of engineering do you like? Do you like the discovery of inventing something? Do you like being able to pull maybe more chemical things apart? Um, do you like maybe the process and the overview of everything in, in that company or business or operation? Um, as an industrial engineer, that's what I like. I like to see all the pieces to the puzzle and then optimize as much as I can of that process in order for it to be, um, I guess, more productive. That's, that's what industrial engineers typically are looking for. Um, and typically we go into manufacturing facilities. I'm a little different. I go into construction. But everything is a process. I look at the whole process and I find inconsistencies or things that can be changed or improved upon. And I do what I can to make those improvements. Um, and it makes a big difference. If I was a mechanical engineer, you know, obviously it's mechanicals. <laughs> I'm not one, so I'm sorry, but more cars is what comes to mind for me. Um, it also has to do sometimes with structure. Um, there's also structural engineers. So there's, it's what type of items are you looking at, questioning, and fascinated by? One final piece of advice you would give someone who's considering engineering. I guess there were two things. Um, number one, and I'll, I'll lead with this one, is uh, there are five different generations in the workforce currently. Um, that 
means that there are people of all ages and all different kinds of culture and experience in the workforce. You're going to work with all of them, uh, especially in construction. Um, so knowing that I'm working with all different generations, I have to be aware again of those soft skills. When I talk to somebody in particular tones, especially since I'm only 28, I could be talking to a gentleman or a woman who is say 45 and they don't like the idea of being told what to do by somebody younger. Um, however, with my role, I'm privy to more information. I need to be able to talk to that person in such a way that I'm not talking down to them. I need to understand that, you know, that might be a little weird for them to deal with. Maybe people in my position and in my generation don't have the same language or maybe even the same body language as other people in other generations. So understanding you're working with all these different people is makes a big difference. Um, the second thing I would like to bring up actually has to do with the, the mascara advantage. Uh, we have something called the mascara advantage and it is basically all these different qualities that our company wants all of their employees, all of us to possess or to have, or to um, excel at. And the biggest, biggest item is being humble, hungry, and smart. I think the smart kind of comes along with being an engineer, but being humble is again, knowing those ge different generations, knowing your role and kind of being able to see the bigger picture, it helps a lot and not necessarily talking down to people or, um, you know, knowing that you don't know everything um, and maybe approaching somebody with a question instead of a demand or a direction. Um, it goes a long way, whether you're an engineer or not, but we're talking in project engineer at a managerial level becomes very, very key. Um, and then the hungry is obviously wanting to be very good at what you do and pursuing um, items that you don't necessarily know, um, looking into different things or maybe putting in those extra hours here and there, but pushing yourself to be more and bigger, better person than you are. So those qualities, I think, cover everything that you want to be as a project engineer and as a person. But if you can at least keep that in the back of your mind, then I think you'll get be more successful than a lot of other people who might push it a lot farther to the back of their mind. <laughs> this was a really wonderful conversation, Lisa. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise and experience with, experiences with us. For more information or to learn about other careers in the Career Journey series, visit our website and check back soon for our next installment. Thanks! Thanks.